Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. We have a guest here today. We got Laura uh, Diggle, um, and she's here to be with Senior Corps, and she's here to talk about looking for volunteers and seeing how the Senior Pro Corps program helps benefit the city of Missoula. So I'll have her on in a little bit, but let's kick things off with a little bit of weather with that polar vortex that's been going around. Um, it is negative one outside. <laughs> so um, I walked outside this morning, and it was just like, Outside hurt. <laughs> that's how I felt. So your high is going to be 25, your low is going to be 12, and then that's quickly going to change by Thursday with your high is going to be in the 30s, low is going to be in the 20s, and then we're going to be seeing some 40 degree temperatures going through Friday, Saturday. Well, it's fine and dandy here in Missoula. Um, it's pretty getting pretty bad over in the eastern uh, part of Montana and pretty much 75% of the northern uh, North American coast, North American uh, region. Um, a big part of it is seeing temperatures as low as in the negative 20s and 30s in some of the northern parts of the United States with some freezing temperatures going as far as south as Louisiana. So. Um, Let's talk a little bit about that polar vortex, because that's a big news. Um, the North Arctic winds have taken over the east side of the United States with similar to polar, the polar vortex. Now the, weather sh now the weather National Weather Service claims uh, coined the term polar vortex. Um, the life-threatening cold is paralyzing the region, closing schools, businesses, and courthouses, grounding flights, and keeping millions confined to their homes. Harsh winter weather is even reaching the deep south with freezing temperatures, snow, and ice in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. A circulation of strong upper level winds that normally surround the northern pole move at a circle, um, eventually breaks down, and a low pressure system pushes the winds down south. Um, North America, Europe, Asia are some of the countries that are most affected by these anomalies that happen. Uh, meteorologists say they stay inside with extreme cold this week. Missoula may be fine, but cold temps are here for a little while. Um, in more local news, the University of Montana has announced a, a significant reduction in fines levied by the U.S. Department of Education against the campus for inaccurate and misleading crime statistics for, uh, from nearly $1 million to about uh, 400000 uh, so, of course, these are uh, the records that were kept at crime st statistics, you know, university uh, police system. Um, the university, of course, um, back in 2011, the DOJ came to Missoula about um, women coming forward about being sexually assaulted on campus, which opened uh, the court cases. Many things happened during this time, the Jordan Johnson case, Bo Donaldson case, uh, of course. Um, and then, of course, the university was tasked with crime statistics from 2017, but UM classification between theft and burglary has changed since then, which resulted in misinformation to the Department of Education, according to the University of Montana officials. Um, and the fines uh, all date back to the uh, Jean Cleary Act, which was created when Cleary, who was a student at the time of her death in 1985, at the age of 19, was killed in her campus dormitory. Cleary's parents, who believe the university has failed to share vital information with its students regarding campus safety, campaigned for legislative reform f for several years following their daughter's death, which resulted in fines that uh, rack up to about ten to about thirteen thousand uh, dollars per. Um, crime uh, statistic that they get wrong. So Monday, the uh, Montana Office of Commissioners of Higher Education, which has been in the dis discussion with the Department of Education, did not provide any written statement by the department about the fine reduction, but says one would be available on a later date. So that's kind of what's happening in the Missoula area. In, in national news, the Government has been reopened. It reopened last week. Um, the following a 35-day partial government shutdown, President Trump's State of the Union address has been rescheduled for Tuesday, February 5th. The State of the Union address Nancy Pelosi used as a uh, play to get uh, Trump to reopen the government. Um, Trump has said that he would go into a state of emergency if a wall isn't built. Uh, of course, the next three weeks, the government will be open and will play catch up with a pain a with with also paying 800,000 federal workers in the United States who have missed uh, basically two and a half, three paychecks, and also bills that have been in wait while Dems and GOP work on good faith to come up with a solution for border security. So that's kind of what's happening in the news. I got a brand new, I have an art clip for you guys, and this is for the auction that's going to be happening at the Missoula Art Museum this Saturday in the UC Ballroom. So it's their uh, 47th annual art auction, and here's a little taste of all the art that will be on auction 
for the art auction this Saturday. And when I come back, I'm going to have Laura here. Hey everybody, I'm here with Laura uh, Degel, right? Yes. And we're here to talk about Senior Corps, and Senior Corps is part of the Missoula Aging Services, promoting the uh, the dignity, health of older adults and their uh, caregivers. Actually, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults and those who care for them. But right. you had it so close. I'm, I'm really closer. proud of I'm you. Getting You're every, getting it every time. Every time, every time I get a little bit more. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to have you. Um, you're here to talk about uh, Senior Corps. So yes. what is Senior Corps? Well, Senior Corps is a group of volunteers who are age 55 and older who go out into the community and do volunteerism. Today I actually want to put a focus on our Senior Companion program. Mm -hmm. Senior Companions really do further the mission of Missoula Aging Services to promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. First, we have older adults that are helping to help other older adults right. remain living independent in their own home. They do this by going shopping, getting them to their doctor's appointments. We also spend a lot of time educating our volunteers. That way they can help with elder justice, we can help connect our clients with services in the community that might help them to remain living independent longer. Cool. Yeah. And this is a, a, a good program for people who are uh, um, 55 and older, right? Yes. And who like or just retired and want to figure out what they want to do with their, their new retirement. Well, you know, why not uh, volunteer? That's right. Why not volunteer? There's all kinds of things to do. We don't limit it with just senior companions. You can do anything from helping in the school system, helping adults remain living independently. We have Project Community Connect coming up on Friday, and we have a handful of volunteers helping to support our at-risk-of-being-homeless population here in Missoula. It just its endless. So we try to match volunteers with what their desire is right. to do, because if volunteers aren't happy, they're not gonna stick around, so and, we wanna keep them happy. And another note is that Missoula Asian Services uh, has a lot of volunteers. There's a lot of volunteers that come through there. Yes. Um, and you always point them in a lot of directions. Uh, <laughs> and you work with a lot of uh, groups. So if you're a nonprofit here in the city of Missoula looking for volunteers, why not just contact Missoula Asian Services? They can hook you up with a bunch of volunteers as well. That's right. That's the way to go. We have over 600 volunteers community wide. We consider ourselves the volunteer hub for people age 55 and older for sure. Yep. I mean, uh, like for me, like I didn't necessarily know that as much until much later on. And like I didn't know, like, Missouri Asian Services had so many people working and volunteering and providing so many hours free to provide for this wonderful community. Yes, yes, it's an endless support system. We do anything we can because keeping our volunteers active is keeping them independent as well, keeping them healthy. There's so many benefits to volunteerism. 
So we definitely try to bring on people age 55 and older, but really anybody can come and be a volunteer. We try to work a lot with the university to keep our seniors connected intergenerationally with students. So there's a lot to do. Yep. And if you want to volunteer, you can go to uh, MissoulaagingServices.org. I got the website right here. So if you want to take a look, boom. There it is, MissoulaAgentServices.org. You can get all the information that you need about their services. You can uh, volunteer. You can get services like Meals on Wheels. You know They've been on here a bunch of times talking about that. But they're always looking for volunteers, and this is the best place to go if you want more information about that. All right. And then you also have a number. Do you want to say the number for everybody? Absolutely. Please give us a call at 728-7682 and ask for volunteer services. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to mention? Anything else I want to mention? Absolutely. We treat everybody with honor and dignity and respect, and we would love to talk with you about what your heart is calling you to do. So don't forget to come on down or give us a call at 728-7682. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Laura. All right. Thank you. Yep. We'll be right back right after this. Just hold on a second. <laughs> I do not believe there was ever more attractive a life to a vigorous young man than life on a cattle ranch in my days in Dakota. It was still the Wild West in those days, the West of Frederick Remington drawings and Owen Wister stories. It was the West of the cowboy and the soldier, the hunter and the Indian. And we knew hunger and thirst and pain, and I saw men die violent deaths working among cattle or with horses or fighting in evil feuds with one another. But we felt the beat of hardy life in our veins and ours was the spirit of work and the joy of living. And it brought the life back into his life that he thought had been lost forever. these pictures that is we call jade mining in the kitchen state and uh, another one is left on compact mine it is compact mine so these two are the best examples of human rights violation and damages the environment uh, in 2014 uh, global witness estimates that from this mining jade mining they made 31 billion of dollars. It's equal to 48 percent of the country GDP, and therefore the six time government spend spend on the healthcare services. But we don't know where is the money go. Who take their money? Who control these areas? And there are ten thousands of people displaced from that that jade money, and hundreds of people died every year because of the landslide for this money. Effectively, China has already done this in many ways with the Han in the East by working to eliminate local differences in language and culture and such during the development process. So in many ways, what they're doing in Xinjiang mirrors what they've already done in Guang, Guangdong or Guangxi or Fujian. Uh, it's mirroring what they've been doing in Tibet for a little while, sure, and there's a direct transfer of technology here. So I think that they saw that this is just a natural part of the economic development process, it was this kind of integration. There had been discontent before that, of course. Famously, in 1997, the Gulja incidents, uh, which was when basically local Islamic groups decided to hold a soccer tournament. And in response, the state overreacted and moved tanks onto the soccer pitch, and that turned into a riot. Um, but things weren't regular in this way until after the economic push began. I'm going about my business, and I hear this announcement over the intercom, Svein Newman, please come to gate E27 to claim your bag. And mostly I'm impressed that they got my name right, because I have an uncle who 30 years later still can't do it. 
Um, but obviously, it, it's a little jarring too, but there's not a lot I can do, so I sort of continue going about my business. Uh, and they announce again, Svein Newman, please come to gate E27 now. So I hurry and I sprint there and there's a flight attendant on the phone with TSA to come detonate my bag at a personal cost of $2,000 to me because freedom isn't free. Um, A lot of good programs on MCAT. All you got to do is find us MCAT.org, or you can log on to, or you can go watch us on Channel 189 or 190. All right, let's kick things into gear. It's time for some City Council. And City Council was all talking about the 10-year uh, plan to end homelessness and how it's not working. This is public comment with Gil Wiggins. Uh, during public comment, talks about homelessness and how it's not working. By saying that the shelters must be 300 feet from residential addresses, the city is legislatively dehumanizing the people who would take shelter there. Is a shelter not a residence? Are they not, are they not respected as residents of Missoula? Do Missoulians in need of homeless shelters have fewer rights than those with the privilege of a permanent residence? The zoning statute seems to imply that this is the case. And third, I will reiterate, this law is a barrier to ending homelessness and would pose literally zero cost to the city to remove. Um, as a side note, I would also like to bring up that today, today you'll be voting on whether or not to allocate $119,534, and I think 54 cents, but I could be wrong on the pennies, to the Missoula Police for the purchase of four new BMW motorcycles. Aside from the fact that motorcycles are only viable as a means of transportation for about half the year in Missoula and serve no purpose in quelling traffic violations, seeing as they only make it easier to catch people, that's, and that's post post uh, infraction. Uh, the cost of these four motorcycles alone could put as many as 19 people in 19 separate apartments. All right, so that was Gil Wiggins talking about that. Um, moving on to, uh, you know, of course, um, one of the few things that have a, te uh, a tendency to happen, especially in places um, it, just like in everybody thing is the quote, not in my backyard. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sentiment that is shared by many uh, folks alike where they wanna help homeless folks who are struggling, but they just don't wanna see them struggle. A lot of times people wanna see the success story, but they don't wanna see how a lot of people go through many different um, struggles with homelessness and crisis. So, uh, in a, there's only a few places in Montana with services, such as the recent warming center at the Salvation Armory, which is uh, considered a wet center. Uh, but of course, it's only temporary and it will end in March. Of course, Project Community Connect, um, we had um, my guest here, Laura, she talked about this as well, but Project Community Connect is happening this Friday. Um, it's part of uh, to help in, in homelessness and also a good way to connect with some people who are in the situation. And it's happening from um, Friday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's going to be at the Zootown Church, and it's just off of Broadway. No, not Brooks. Sorry, it's Brook Street. Um, it's in that general area where they're um, redeveloping a lot of places up there. So anyways, here is Shane. Um, he is a former homeless person who struggles with addiction. Inside, because I can tell you personally that it is 100% impossible to sober up on the streets, especially during the winter. Um, it's just... It's never going to happen. You use it as a means to um, make yourself feel better about a dark situation. Um, I've been shot at. I've been stabbed. I've been sexually assaulted. Um, I've had limbs broken. Um, I've had some really horrible things happen to me on the streets. And uh, if it weren't for uh, being privileged enough to have a few friends with homes that were able to put me up long enough for me to dry up, um, I'd probably be dead right now. Um, that's all. All right, so that was Shane. Um, I have one last quote for you guys as well. Many people in Missoula are, um, like, um, like he was mentioning, it's a lot harder to uh, get um, sober if you don't have a place to be. Um, the POV is considered a dry center, which requires guests to be sober 100%. Anyone caught fighting are ejected from the POV, and um, the only 
wet uh, center is the temporary warming uh, center at the Salvation Army. Uh, you cannot drink and do drugs on the property, mind you, but you will not be turned down if you are uh, drunk and or high at the time of entry. So, um, Natalie uh, Margolis um, talks about homelessness as well, um, and she is a former student of uh, sociology. After many studies that it is not that hard for people to fall into this pattern. And given our really kind of like unstable economy, the unstable world that we're in, it's really hard to tell who's going to fall into those patterns and who's not going to fall in. So one way that we need to look at this is the fact that any of us could end up there. It is not an individual problem. There are scientists that have proved that this is more of like a social problem and really recognize that this is something to be taken very, very seriously. So at best, some of the things that we could do, like some of my other friends have been saying, is um, work on ways to prevent homelessness and treat homelessness. So work on ways to prevent people from falling into those patterns by providing proper social supports, and then treat people that have already gotten there. Now, given the current political climate, the chances of that happening are pretty low, right? Like, y'all don't have the money to actually pay for those types of programs. But at bare, bare minimum, the very least we can do is um, make sure that there are shelters downtown, some places, that there, that some structures that are, you know, like anti-homeless people, like these benches that are slanted, that those things don't pop up. Make sure that we just provide the basics. So, if we cannot provide the funding for these more advanced programs that we should have according to social science, the very, very least we can do is these basic shelters. So please. All right. So um, that was my last quote from city council. Most of this was about public comment. Um, public comment took over uh, most of the meeting where they're talking about um, homelessness and the Missoula's 10-year plan and homelessness uh, kind of ended uh, yesterday because they had a meeting about homelessness and this happened uh, basically around 4 p.m. yesterday and it went into about 6. We put it on our channel. You can, uh, you, I believe you guys can have access to it on channel 180, 190 and you can check your local listings for when it, it will air, but most likely you to find more information, go to MCAT.org. But of course, if you're interested in finding out more about the city of Missoula and those meetings, you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful resource uh, for everything Missoula. It permits more, everything, just kind of learning about employment, paying bills, and all that stuff is a wonderful source for everything Missoula. All right, so let's throw it over to a video. I don't have a dub and stuff for you guys, but I do have uh, highlights from episode four of Dude I Just Drew, which basically just dropped last weekend. So here's a little taste of that. You'll be able to have access to the full video on my Facebook page when I post it later today. Hey. hey guys, uh, welcome to Dude I Just Drew, episode four, with another person that you might not care about, uh, Lily. It's me. Uh, yeah. It's time to explain the rules. Okay. Um, five minute drawing. Uh, we draw. We, <coughs> uh, that's it. Uh, we coin toss <laughs> the guest. <laughs> who goes first? Five, uh, five um, suggestions we pull out of a hat pulled by our lovely uh, Cabbage Patch kids back there. Oh, and <laughs> Yeah, and two comments. With his <laughs> that's how I got control of Matilda. That's how he, that's how he adopted that's Matilda. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get those anime eyes in. How anime? And that little nose. They're pretty, they're pretty anime. Nice. Yeah. Let me tell you. I wanna tell you. Let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. There's more numbers than your mother weighs on the scale. <laughs> Big Daddy Urkel made a big dirty. Made a big 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 big
But now know. I'm here to be your president for 2020. And you know what? I have a story to tell. Uh, so there's a train, and you know, he was a little train, and he got off the track, right? <laughs> Everyone gets off the track a little bit. But like, sometimes you gotta get on the track, and then, and then you are on the track, and now you're in the right place, and I'm gonna be that right place for you and that right track. So vote for me, 2020 president of 2020. And you know, I have 2020 vision, so like, <laughs> and then inside there's in, inside the hat there's there's a mouse right there. <laughs> it's, oh, oh my god, god. it's ready to you. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> there's more than one animal hiding in this kitchen. <laughs> okay, um let me just have I'm a scared. to reflect <laughs> on all of my poor life decisions. <laughs> Number one, being on. <laughs> Number one, being here. Number two, um, having a pencil. This is like a, Does this like, help? Uh, this is Does this help with me? Here. Does this help with me just sitting here like this? Just like. You're just like, this could be you. Hey, hey, look at me. This could be you. Okay, I'm ready to draw. This, this could be you. Yeah, you've you've, got, your, me here, you've guys. got your work cut out. I do have my work cut out for me. I'm glad that you're actually on the show because it's been it's been three episodes. Are you gonna take <laughs> some great you know, some great art, some great um, president content. speeches, good content. <laughs> um, it's been, it was fun. It was been it's been a treat. Artists, please come to please. Sorry, Missoula. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, travel you here. Have to be good and don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah, you know, I'm trash. You can you can you can do you can be whatever you want to be in the show. It's all yeah. Creativity first, uh, artist second. Yeah. Yes. So with, with, with that, go check us both out yes. at whatever sites we're on. Yeah, because it's we're really on easy the... to look me up. Everything is there. Go look for the um, dude I just drew Facebook. Uh, did I say that already? I yeah. don't think so. I don't uh, think so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, thanks, and we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, bye. Hey, everybody. <laughs> My name is Ryan, <laughs> and I'm, I'm a pretty good person. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome back. Um, let's talk about some events that are happening in the city of Missoula. It's time for events. Um, starting this morning is Intro to Mac. If you are, uh, if you want to be part of the Lifelong Learning Center, this is continuing education to expand your knowledge with the Lifelong Learning Center or the Dickinson uh Lifelong Learning Center, but this is uh, Learn Basics of the Mac computer, and this is happening from 9 a.m. right now to 12, 12 p.m. Uh, they have a bunch of other classes. This is $97. Uh, Tiny Tales is going to be at Empower Place. That's the Missoula Food Bank starting at 10.30 a.m., part of the Missoula Public Library Extension. Um, Hands-on Science, Hovercrafts. They're going to be talking about Hovercrafts, and Inspector's Discovery is open for visitors of all ages to explore science through engaging exhibits activities. Uh, it's uh, 3.50 for anyone four and over, and if you're under three, you get in free. And this is their 812 Tool Avenue address. Um, engineer your own tabletop hovercrafts and take a rideable hovercraft for a spin at the Discovery Bench today. And the makerspace is cardboard construction. Um, Scrabble and Bridge, iPhone and iPad Basics, Lifelong Learning Center is teaching you guys about the iPhone and iPad right after your Mac. Chili and Speak Out unite against money in politics. Missoula Public Library is doing a hangout group where people will come together, celebrate the progress in Missoula and Montana towards stopping, citizen, uh, stopping Citizens United, share ideas that can flourish when big money and corporations no longer set our national agenda. And that's going to be happening in Missoula Public Library at 6 p.m. tonight. Um, it's the last Wednesday comedy at the Badlander, so every last Wednesday of the month, uh, Badlander hosts a comedy night, but also they have a workshop for ladies who want to get into comedy starting at 6 p.m., and then the comedy starts at 7 p.m. Uh, Hellgate High School Poetry Out Loud is tonight at 6.30 p.m. at the Hellgate's Rothwell Theater, um, and that's the theater just off of their street right next to their building. You can't miss it. And, of course, they have a whole bunch of karaoke going on tonight at Dark Horse, uh, VFW, but also they have a bunch of comedy as well and trivia. Uh, Thursday, newspapers.com library edition. Missoula Public Library is offering access to newspaper.com library edition. Newspapers provide a unique view of the past and editorials to help us understand and connect with people, events, and attitudes of an earlier time. And this is happening at the Missoula Public Library starting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m.
Children's Museum mobile exhibit. If you're ever wondering what happened to the Families First Children's Museum, they're going to be at Spectrum Discovery Center starting at 11 a.m. tomorrow after, uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, the enthusiastic plan for their new home in the Museum Public Library. Their team has been working to creative ways to stay connected with families they love to serve. They're rolling out a free program, Community Connections, to bring the museum experience to you. And, this, and today they're going to be at the Spectrum Discovery Center tomorrow at 11 a.m. Well, it's time for avalanche season. Of course, you know, they have avalanche level one, um, Downey and Mountain Lodge. Um, so this is a two evening classroom series followed by two days of field and two days of night at a lodge. This is a big deal. It's a $450 um, for this whole entire uh, deal. It's like you learn about it and you can design for current and aspiring backcountry travelers. This course focuses on develop a solid foundation in avalanche knowledge and backcountry travel skills. So if you are a backpacker and you want to take your hiking to a new level, you can take this avalanche class level one. Make it and take a craft of the Big Sky Branch, uh, Big Sky High School after school tomorrow afternoon around 2.30 p.m. They have a make it and take your crafts. So you make your own crafts and you take it home with you. And if you want to call, you can inquire at 728-2400, extension 8605. Again, that number is 728-2400. That is the MCPS phone number, and their extension is 8605. Yep, postpartum principles, Zutun Arts Community Center. What the heck is postmodern art? Contemporary art can be confusing and intimidating to the um, un initialized, but the this camp will break down the big art ideas, uh, reconstructions, appropriation, juxtapolation, hybridity in simple, <laughs> manageable, and fun projects and activities. And this is happening Thursday, January 31st, 3 to 5 p.m. And this is $95 or $85 for members. Uh, rent Wise Workshop, this is part of Word, uh, free rent Wise Workshop is hosted by Homeward and Word, which is an acronym. Having a hard time get into a rental home? Uh, confused about credit? Get ready to rent by learning the keys to being a successful renting renter. Um, so they're going to be do this at Word, and I believe this is going to be at their um, 2405 Macintosh Loop, Missoula, Montana, and this is happening tomorrow from 3 to 5 p.m. If you're a renter or you want to get into renting, um, this is a good class just to learn all about the ins and outs of renting. Predator feeding at the uh, Missoula Insectarium. You can go to MissoulaButterflyHouse.org for more information. Predator feeding is where they feed their hungry predator and see how they capture and consume their prey. Come see who is hungry today. Uh, Lego Club, Missoula Public Library, they do Lego Club every Thursday. It's great. It's wonderful. Kids play with Legos. Who can ask for more? Um, Missoula Soup, this is going to be at Free Cycles. Missoula Soup is a um, micro-granting dinner. Soup attendees may do donations at the door. It's 5 to $10. It's at 6 p.m. It's a simple dinner, a uh, short musical performance, and a vote. Dinners, uh, diners vote to select one of their four projects, all of which would benefit Missoula, pitched without use of tech by proposer to win donated cash from the door. Everybody wins. Soup is fun, interactive, engaging, hopeful democracy in action. Come help a bring, a big, build a stronger, cooler, and weirder, brighter Missoula, one creative project at a time. So this is a, a kind of a pitch meeting at the Missoula Free Cycles. They're going to be talking about what kind of projects they want to work on. And basically, they have the people say yay or nay. And that's kind of what it is. It's just a, an open forum for people to create with Free Cycles. And it's starting tomorrow at 6 p.m. Comedy Brewery Tour. More comedy. This is at Highlander Beer. Kick off your Thursday night with a free 30-minute tour of Highlander Beer led by comedian uh, Zach Jarvis. Walk through the brewery area, learn about the history, and have a laugh. Answers Zach's trivia questions right, and you have a chance of winning free beer. They'll even be known to give uh, samples at the end. All ages are welcome at 6.30 Thursday night. All right, so if you're interested in finding out more about your Missoula events, you go to MissoulaEvents.net for more information about what's going on. Hey, what's going on in Missoula? MissoulaEvents.net. All right, here's what's going on here at MCAT. MCAT is a nonprofit uh, television station here in town, which offers people a chance to um, let their voices be heard in a television medium. If you are interested in being part of MCAT, uh, you can log on to our website, MCAT.org, for more information. MCAT.org is your local resources for everything. Um, we do a bunch of summer camps for kids uh, and let the kids experience and let them create whatever they feel like. Um, and 
we try to cultivate their creativity in uh, spring flicks. So we're going to be doing a uh, spring break summer camp, $150 uh, per kid. And it's basically five days of fun, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's a nice uh, replacement for school. There is pre-care starting at 8.30 a.m. And it's fun. We did our winter camp or winter days, and it was fun. We had uh, seven kids who signed up for that, so it's, it was fairly inclusive, which is nice. Each kid got a chance to do their own thing, which is pretty awesome, and that's what we're going to do for MCAT for our Spring Flix camp. And of course, we'll, be start at, we'll probably start advertising our summer camps in February, so look out for those as well. All right, so we got sports happening Thursday night as well. There's going to be a basketball game tomorrow night. It's going to be at Sentinel High School. I can't remember off the top of my head who Sentinel is going to be playing. All I know is, is it, it's going to be at Sentinel, and we're going to be live streaming it on Missoula's Community Media Resources Facebook page starting at 7 p.m. So you can look for us then, and that's going to happen tomorrow night. Um, what else do I need to mention? Every Wednesday is orientation. If you are a person in the community who wishes to be a, be a part of the MCAT community and MCAT family, you can come here at 5.30, just drop in and be like, hey, I want to know what MCAT's all about. It will teach you everything that you need to know about it. But the only uh, fee that is required for MCAT is a new program. So if you come down here, we expect you to make a program for our channel. All right. I think that's about it for me. I want to thank our guest, Laura, talking from Missoula Senior Corps. I want to thank uh, Lori um, for all she does here for MCAT. And I want to thank you for joining me this morning on Wake Up Missoula. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Have a good week.